Hey, it's Anthony Pietroponi here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over another week in the market update, go over the trades we took this past week, and also see where we think the market's going to go in the coming weeks. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button, especially if you trade uh, NASDAQ or S&P 500 futures. That's what I mainly trade here. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're currently taking a look at S&P 500 futures and we're on the weekly chart, but we're going to break it down to the daily chart. I just have a few levels laid out here. So basically what you'll see is every time we traded up to about 41.55, we got rejected. We traded above it for a bit, but we came back down, tested the 40.90, 40.80 area and bounced. And we've just been chopping around those two levels. But uh, we broke below the 40.90 area once, but there was a fake out, came up, broke above the 41.55 area, fake out, came back down. And we're currently below the 40.90 level. So the question is, do we use that as resistance now and trade below? or is this another fake out and we trade back up again before trading lower. So there's two kind of prospects here. It's like we either trade down to the 40, 30, 40, 40 area before bounce, or we bounce back up to the 4130 to 4120 area before trading back down again. <clears throat> I currently have a short position in my swing account, I average at 4080. I've talked about this in previous videos. I, if, if we do trade up again and sweep the highs above 42.50, that's when I would add on back half of my position. Or if we trade up to about 41.50 area, that's when I would start to add some in. But for now, just holding half the position at the 40.80 area. If we just continue to go down and continue to go lower, then that's okay. I'm okay with half the position. If we do come up, that's when I'll add back in half the position and look for more downside. My targets on the downside are 39.50 as a first profit target to 39.60. This area here, just sweeping this low at the 39.65 area and trading down to the support to the left here back at January 19th. Second area is actually sweeping the lows here to the left in December, coming down to that 39, uh, coming down to that 37.90 area. Before I do a breakdown on the trades that I took, I'm gonna I'll go over the dollar, the 10-year, the two-year, and high-yield corporate bonds. I've just been following all these things together because it kind of paints a picture of where we can see the price action go in the coming weeks and months. So let's dive into the dollar first. For the dollar, we bought on February 2nd, the same time as the Jerome Powell spoke and we topped with the S&P 500 and we've been rallying ever since on the dollar and since then we've been declining on the S&P 500. Now we have this topping tail here which could indicate that we're going lower on the dollar. If we do that, then we see a rally in the S&P 500 and you're currently seeing we just trade up to resistance to the left around January 5th. So if we go lower on the dollar, S&P 500 goes higher. If we do break above the 105.8 and continue higher, that looks good for more downside on the S&P 500. On the 10 year, same thing, looks bullish, but we traded up to the resistance to the left on December 30th. We have this topping tail on Friday, and that looks like we could go back lower. If we go back lower, then the S&P 500 goes higher. If we do close above that 3.9 area, then likely to continue to see more upside for the 10 year and more downside for the S&P 500. On the two year, same idea, it looks super bullish, but we need to close above that 4.8 area to really see a lot more pain for the S&P 500 in my opinion, because we just trade up to the resistance to the left again, November 8th, and we have a topping tail, same idea possible to head lower where the S&P 500 heads higher. So we need to see this at 4.8 if we want to see more downside in the S&P 500. One more thing here, high yield corporate bonds. This is essentially smart money. So it's been selling off as the S&P 500 has been rallying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the ES futures and just show a little comparison and see the relation and the correlation of how they've been trading together lately. When I overlay HYG with ES futures on the weekly chart, you can see that HYG has been trading with S&P 500 for the past years. And every single time that the S&P 500 gets away from HYG, then it tends to follow and actually trade down to where HYG traded when you overlay the charts. This is just one thing I've been paying attention to. It's been happening in the past couple of years. First example we're gonna talk about is when we looked at the end of 2021, when we had the market top. You see October, September, we traded down to it, and then HYG started trading down as S&P 500 rallied for one more rally attempt up into January. And then ever since January, it actually sold off and boom, tapped the chart, rallied a bit, and tapped the new lows. So every time we made new lows on HYG, S&P 500 tended to follow. And every time we had a rally where HYG did not follow, then it was a false bear market rally and we traded back down. So if you take a look at the rally here at, in March, we rallied up as HYG traded sideways, 
And then what did we do? We traded down for the weeks all the way straight down to where HYG traded. Had a little bit of rally, spike back down. June lows traded right where it was, rallied up again. October lows traded right down where it was and then rallied uh, into the end of the year and then sold off in January. And beginning of January, we've been rallying ever since. However, we made this low at the end of December and we didn't trade down to this low at the end of December. And late and previously, every single time we did make a low, if you look back at the charts, the S&P 500 did trade down to it. It just may have taken one, two, or three months. This last rally was one more attempt to stop out all shorts, in my opinion, and we're really far away from HYG. So this indicates to me that we are gonna trade down to this level, looking to the left. It's about the same as the weekly highs of October 10th. So if we take a look at the weekly highs of October 10th, it's actually sitting around 37.40. And this is on ES Futures. So this basically means that we're likely to trade down to 37.30 in the next one, two months because it's already been it's already been two months that we've been having this discrepancy where we're not trading with HYG. And typically this lasts one, two, or three months before it catches up and trades back with HYG. So in the next one to two months, it's likely for us to actually trade down to the 3700s on S&P 500 futures. If this correlation holds up, the correlation can decide to no longer matter anymore, but just looking back on previous recent history, it's been doing that, and if it continues to do that, then that's the target, 3730 to 3750. If you see even at the end of the year, you see that it started moving away basically at the end of October. So, you know, October 25th, the S&P 500 diverged from HYG, and then take a look at when it actually hit HYG again. So October 25th, and then it hit January 24th. So that's November, December, January. So it took three months for the S&P 500 to trade back down to where HYG was. So currently, when did we start to diverge? Well, you could say we really started to diverge, honestly, in December, but uh, the biggest divergence you could say is about January 17th. So February 17th, March 17th, April 17th is the latest of where we can see it, us taking to get down to the 3700s area or lower. So basically, it looks like between middle of March and middle of April is where we're going to see S&P 500 trade at around 3,700. Now let's take a look at the trades that we took this past week. Uh, Wednesday and Friday, I took two trades. The first trade we took was on Wednesday. It was a NASDAQ short. We have our short bias. And reason why we took this, this, this is on the five minute chart. It was a, this is on the five minute chart. It was basically a one to one, a little more than a one to one. And we took it about 10 a.m. Reason why I took this one is because that we were actually trending up uh, all day after selling off previously. So once we were turning up, I was looking for us to stop out all shorts by taking out the buy side liquidity. And we did that about 9.30 a.m., uh, coming up to about 12, 6.30. And we actually traded into resistance to the left. If we take a look at the 15 minute chart from like the previous day, I'll show you that after this. But we traded up here and then we had this big rejection. So once I saw this huge five minute candle, I was like, okay, what I'm gonna look for now is us to trade up into the resistance to the left that we just made and target the liquidity to the downside, the overnight lows. And that was at 12, 531. So I actually got in right uh, just like a couple points below the high on this candle. The high of the candle was like 12, 591. I got in at 12, 587. And then TP was the overnight low here at uh, 12, 531. So it was 56 points. And it, was, it only took about like 10, 15 minutes. And that worked out beautifully. I'll show you that on the 15 minute chart. It's not as easy to see, but here you can clearly see that you know we were, we were trending up just from overnight trending up overnight. Once we stopped out everyone to the upside and had this big move down, I had my short bias initially already. So after I saw we already swept the liquidity and we moved down, I thought to myself, where's the next target? Next target is overnight lows. So I didn't want to get in right away on this candle down here at 12,560, 12,550. No, what I wanted to do is wait for a rally and get my entry being a little bit of up here resistance to the left making my stop be above the current high and TP being below overnight lows. 
So that one worked out beautifully. On the 15 minute chart, this is what you can see as well. Same idea, this is on Wednesday. You can see that we rallied up Tuesday and then sold off into the close and have been selling off all night. But then in the morning, early morning, 2 a.m. Wednesday, we started rallying and we we're just trending up and up and up and had this big push here while well, Wednesday morning. But once we had the open, I saw that, you know, 9.30, boom, we traded up, swept all the highs, but we traded right to this resistance to where my mouse is at 12, 6.30. So it made complete, complete sense that we're still respecting my downtrend on my bias, but we also already stopped out the shorts. So next target after we had the five minute candle closed down would be these lows to the left here at 12, 5.31. The second trade here was on Friday, and it was Friday morning about 8.30 a.m. The reason why I took this one is actually a long, and it was because that we sold off heavily overnight, and we started basing in the pre-market, so I thought to myself, next target would be sweeping the highs. I thought we could actually push up to the 12, 4, 30, 4, 40 area, but I wanted to be safe and just go by the recent highs. So if you take a look, we, we went dumped all the way down to 3 a.m., made a low 3 a.m., this is on the 15 minute chart. We traded up into the resistance to the left and got rejected. We came down, but we made a higher low. So this is, was my confirmation. We made the higher low and we traded up again, got rejected again, came down. And this is where I took my entry long. They're gonna wanna stop out late shorts now. So after we made this higher low, I thought to myself the next target would be sweeping buy side liquidity at the 12.410 or 12.430 slash 440 area because 2 a.m. was the high here at the 12, 4, 20 ish area. But to be safe, 4, 12, 4, 10 was my target. And we started trending up right away when I bought this other higher low. So you see low, higher low, one more higher low, stop out all the shorts. And then you can see where it traded after. But this is 1.5 R, it was great risk and plus 37 points right there. It's gonna conclude the video. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos just like this if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader. I'll see you for the midweek market update video and then the end of the week market update video where I go over my trades. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.